Welcome to BuzzBooster.tv. I'm, I'm Nash. Shahar. <laughs> oh, and that's Shahar. <laughs> yeah. Well, I thought it was just the same as usual. You know, we have a very special guest today, and we are going to talk about a topic that you maybe you hear a lot about it, but how many people really go and implement? It's the topic of outsourcing. It's extremely important when you want to scale your business. You know, as much as we like to do the things we love to do in our business, there comes a point that in order for you to grow, you need to be okay with outsourcing. Let some of those tasks go to somebody else to do it. You know, it's interesting for us this topic, right, Nash? Because it took us a long time to start outsourcing. We it like was, to do things. Go ahead. Yeah, it was it was really for me especially a learning process because it's not the easiest thing to delegate. And then once you wrap your mind, okay, I'm going to have someone help me through these things, then for me the challenge was now, now, what do I send them? Like, what do I do? All those things were very difficult for me to learn. Once I got it, now I can't live without it. But it was a, a learning process. It was. It was. And I remember when I hired my first virtual assistant that my problem was I didn't know what to tell her to do. I really didn't know what she was supposed to And, you know, we have a special guest today. She's going to give her two cents about that as well. But I really didn't know. As I said, I, am I sending things that are, you know, quote, too stupid for her to do? Or am I going, what do I do here? I was totally lost. It was an interesting experience. But today, we really want an expert to talk about that. And you're going to meet right now Shalon Iron Road. I've met Shalon, Shalon maybe four or five years ago. Yeah, five, About five, the, yeah. We had the pleasure to work on a project together with one of my clients, and I really, uh, not only I know Shalon, I know what she's capable of, and I can guarantee to you that whatever she's going to talk to you today, she's coming from the expert place because she dealt with m a big, big project with many people involved, and it was really, really impressive. So welcome, Thank Shalon. You. Thank you so much. That's such a nice introduction. Wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So let's, before we dive in into outsourcing, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, my name is Shalon Iron Road, which is good luck remembering that. Um, it's, it's, it is what it is. Oh, um, hey, I'm <laughs> Nash Laboyayan. I'm so so talking about? Sure. <laughs> yeah, so it's Shalon like a hair salon with a sh. I'm a friend of it. Um, I am living in just outside of Washington, D.C. with my family. I have a husband and three children. And uh, I run my own virtual assistant and online business management firm called Bacon Business Management, as in the food, yes. <laughs> How did you get started in this profession? Well, I, I was working with the company that I was with when, when I met these lovely ladies, and um, I was meeting some incredible people, um, authors and speakers, entrepreneurs who knew their stuff, and, and I saw them trying to run their businesses and trying to grow and, and seeing their passion and, and just how excited they were about what they were talking about, but how difficult it was for them. Um, to have time for anything besides admin stuff. And um, so I saw that need there and I was like, that could be interesting. And um, I just really connected with with them on a personal level and I thought, how fun would that be to work with some incredible people and, and also help them grow their businesses. So when I I left that company that I was with, I took a leap of faith and, and um, launched my virtual assistant firm and haven't looked back. <laughs> yeah. It's always good. Now, the outsourcing thing. Yeah. You did work with a lot of entrepreneurs at that point, right? So you saw many different scenarios. Yeah. So what are the benefits of outsourcing, in your opinion? Well, um, the ones that are obvious, I mean, you have a lot more space on your plate um, for the creative stuff. You start your business um, because of your passion, because of your creativity. Um, but then all of a sudden, admin happens. <laughs> you get this huge list of to-dos, of requests from other people, and suddenly your, your creativity is buried underneath all of that. And uh, so that's the, the huge benefit of outsourcing, is that you finally have that space back to develop and to grow your business and, 
and to have that room to be creative. Mm -hmm. um, another benefit is that these people do that we <laughs> we people do this for a living. So the things that take you three hours to do, we could do in an hour and a half. Um, we have systems, we have processes, we have templates in place, we've worked with other business owners who have been through similar things. So we have that experience under our belt. Um, we have a way to to do things so much faster um, and that's that's the benefit to you. Mm -hmm. um, thirdly, I'd say just having somebody there. Um, my favorite client relationships have been just that supportive partnership. Um, I love being there on the phone if they need somebody to call when they're having a rough day or you know they're ready to throw in the towel with their business because it's just not worth it anymore and and just having somebody to be there as your support I think is is a huge benefit. That's very true there is a saying that says the entrepreneur is the loneliest person on earth actually Dan Kennedy coined that phrase and, and that is very true because yeah. on our day-to-day -day lives especially I would say when you're a solopreneur mm -hmm. because your support system usually is not there you, you may have a husband and a family but they really don't understand the challenges you're going through they don't understand the business side yeah. uh, and after a while they're just tired of hearing it <laughs> yes yes <laughs> to be yeah. honest I mean so yeah. it's very difficult really to be able to pick up the phone and talk to somebody that gets what they are doing yeah. uh, do you think there you, we need to be on a certain level in our business to to start outsourcing or it's okay if I'm a one person band and I'm I, I need some help what do you think yeah yeah so that's a great question um, as far as income just so that you're making enough to afford bringing on help um, you don't want to go in, underwater um, to have a virtual okay. assistant um, as far as as far as like phase in your business, I would say um, you need to be in the point to the point in your business where you are clear about your goals and where you want the business to go. If you're bringing somebody on to just kind of go through the rapids with you and not be clear about where you're steering, um, that could I mean that's not the best situation. It's, mm -hmm. it's nice to have help, definitely, and if, if you have somebody to help you get out of a mess, um, that's definitely a benefit, but have that goal in mind, or make that your assignment as you bring that person on to be crystal clear about where you're headed. Yeah, that's a very good point, Shalom, because we know that sometimes entrepreneurs, they get lost in their own uh, little world, and many times they're really not clear where they're going, what they're doing with their business, and it's very, very important, like you said, to have that clear before you start outsourcing, because or else it's going just to be an overload of tasks that will not take you anywhere, either of you anywhere. Yeah. But since you, you you talked about being able to afford, an entrepreneur can they let Let's suppose I'm a solopreneur just starting mm -hmm. out. I mm -hmm. I understand that I have to have some budget, but can I work with outsource? Do I have to hire a virtual assistant full time? Can I do it in uh, part time? How how can I work that? Yeah, um, you do not have to have somebody full time. That is the beauty of virtual assistants. Um, they are independent contractors, so you're not hiring an employee. Um, you can purchase blocks of hours, one hour, two hours. Um, or have them on full time if you if you need it. But yeah, don't feel like you have to have enough work to hire somebody full full time because this is their business. They hire they work with people, multiple people. So mm -hmm. you're not their your their sole source of income. Yeah. So that pressure's off. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and there there are many benefits tied to that as as well. You know, yesterday we were in a meeting and a guy approached me and he worked for some kind of payroll company and he started his spiel and he went because you don't want to be dealing with the payroll and this and that why why you should be doing your work and it and I said well I don't have that problem and he said oh you don't you don't have employees and I said no I actually have a team of about 12 people but they are all outsourced Mm -hmm. Right, so for me, it's a very simple process during the week that we take care of, and it's done. It's yeah. not a huge headache. That saves us a lot of problems. 
Go ahead. One thing, one thing that reminded me, Shahar, even, uh, and I don't know if this was a question that you had planned for Shalon or not, but talking to people, oftentimes they think that to outsource, they have to outsource to folks who are in the Philippines or in India or anywhere else but the United States. Yeah. When in reality, uh, that's not necessarily the case. Just like Shalon, you work, wh where are you? Is it Washington? Washington. Yeah, Washington, D.C. Yeah, D. so you're yeah. working from Washington and we have several people on our team that are in the US but in various locations other than where I'm at in Salt Lake City and that's one of those uh, the beauty the beauty as well yes and that's very true and there are some key people in your team that you want them to be in the same country as you are because yes. it, it makes a big difference Shalom what kind of you remember at the beginning I said that when I hired my first a virtual assistant I really didn't know what to do, right? What kind of yeah. tasks I should be outsourcing. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I think that's the biggest hurdle for entrepreneurs as they're hiring people on and that's a great great excuse not to hire somebody on is I just don't know what to give them. Um, so I would like to give your your audience an exercise to do. Oh, great. Um, <laughs> Um, grab a sheet of paper, it doesn't have to be fancy, it could be printer paper or lined, it doesn't matter. But yeah. I want you to list out everything that you do in a typical day. Um, if you want to keep track during a day as you're working, if you don't want to take time out to do this exercise, that's fine. Just take a piece of paper and have it right there with you. And then at the end of the day, or beginning of the next day, I want you to go through that list. And circle the things that you did or that you do in the typical day that you don't like to do, that don't bring you joy, that drain your energy, even if they only take a couple minutes. If they drain your energy, circle them. Those are the things a virtual assistant can do. <laughs> so whatever, whatever you don't like to do. Um, there are so many virtual assistants out there. Some of them have specialties. Some of them, like mine, are a one-stop shop. Um, we do it all. I don't know. I call myself a human Swiss Army knife because I like. I, just, I always I, love that. I take it on, um, yeah. but but I have so in my business I have three buckets that I put tasks into um, that I do for clients. One of them is office management, so like the back end mm -hmm. administrative stuff. Um, let me give some examples: calendar management, travel planning, um, managing your speaking itineraries, uh, booking hotels, things like that, um, the the day-to-day -day stuff that you do. Um, relationship management is the next bucket. So what I love to help, actually one of my favorite things to do with clients is if I know they're going to an event um, and they know a few people who are going to be there that they want to network with, I'll um, kind of be an online I don't want to say stalker because that sounds really creepy, but I'll, I'll go online and see what, you know, some background information about them, see what they're into. And benchmarking um, for them. Yeah. And give my clients kind of an idea of small talk, you know, that they can make with them. And, and that results in huge results for their business. I bet it does. That That's yeah. worth a lot of money, Shalom, because yeah. that's true. Uh, if you had, as an entrepreneur, the time to research who you're going to meet in those events, mm -hmm. you could accomplish a lot more just for the fact that even during the trip in itself, you have the time to think about possible partnerships, mm -hmm. po possible joint ventures that uh, would be a benefit for both. And, and But if you don't, if just meeting people out there, you get lost in the... Yeah. In the mojo. business cards. <laughs> yes, yes, that's true. You know two things that I hate to do? What's that? Phone calls and filling uh, speaking forms on yeah. when we are invited to speak someplace. Uh, we don't do phone, uh, cold calls here, but we do a lot of follow-up calls. Mm -hmm. I, I don't like to be on the phone, period. That's not something, you know, the, the piece of gadget, the gadget that I use the least is my phone. <laughs> While everybody else is there all the time, I don't like phones. Yeah. And the other one is filling those forms on the sites because it takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Even if it's the same topic and if it's the same information. So yeah. Yeah, no, no like, work. people always wonder if how much like Shahar and I get along. Uh, if we fight, we always get these questions like, <laughs> "Do you guys fight?" And the answer is no, usually not. But usually a discussion starts 
because we have to decide who is going to call. No, you call. No, you call. Oh, but blah, blah, blah. so that's like usually one of those things. And it's the same thing with like submissions of filling out forms and applications. Usually mm -hmm. it's because of those things. Because <laughs> you, you know what I think is an important point here, Shalon, and I, I, I believe you agree with me. The most, inv uh, the most valuable asset we have is time. Okay? Yeah. There is a number tied to, to my minute. And when I have to spend time doing something that is really, in this case, less than I would charge for in a, in a let's say, one-on-one -on -one consultation, I'm actually losing money. You are. So just this last month, I think we did, I don't know, five or six trips. If you're speaking, you have to submit forms for the speaking. And mm -hmm. then you have to submit forms for, uh, I mean, you, you do hotel reservations, plane. When you, when you look at all the things that you have to do online, just concerning one trip, and you mm -hmm. put those in minutes, that's a lot of time. Yeah. Right? If I spend the exact same amount of time, for example, recording our show, mm -hmm. right, I make a lot more money. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't see the point, right? It's it's and yeah, and that's one of the only reasons we end up fighting with each other because who <laughs> is going to spend the time doing? Yeah. So when we we started outsourcing, I mean, I could tell you hours of horror stories of things yeah. that we did wrong in the process. But I want you, as the expert, to tell me what kind of mistakes I really can avoid in this process because it can be a very smooth ride, but it can also be a nightmare. Yeah, and, and that's another hurdle that entrepreneur, entrepreneurs have to get past as they're deciding whether or not to outsource. I'm sure each of, each of you in the audience know somebody who has had just a horrible experience with a virtual assistant and it was, just wasn't worth the effort. And that's unfortunate. And, and I think um, the virtual assistant industry is coming a long way. And... Um, and I'm trying to help that happen, <laughs> just trying to, to really make sure that there's professionalism um, with clients and, and accountability. Um, but as far as the entrepreneur side, um, yeah, so, so the, the hard part of virtual relationships um, is communication. I like to, I like to look at, uh, at things in the outside or on the offline world that are working virtually and um, a great example that came to me um, is in, in airlines or in air travel you have so many different people involved both in the air and on the ground and they have to communicate they have to be able to work together or people lose their lives it's a big deal um, so if we look at what's going on in that industry and and see what we can take from that and put it into the, the virtual world um, or the business owner slash virtual assistant relationship. Communication is the key and it's not just like a one or two step communication process. It's a three step process where you as the business owner communicate something to your professional that you've hired they communicate back that they received it so that you're not sitting there wondering, okay, did they even get it? Did the email go into their spam? So you know for a fact that they got it and then you communicate back that confirms their confirmation so that you have that line of communication open so that when questions come up, um, if your assistant hits a, it's, hits a snag somewhere or something unexpected happens, that line of communication is open and problems get solved so much easier. So I think that's the that's the huge, huge misstep that happens um, when outsourcing is just not having that open line of communication. And it really doesn't have to be that much extra work. Like I know it sounds kind of overwhelming to have, okay, you know, I'm hiring somebody so that I can have all this communication going on. I'm already overwhelmed, you know. But if you get in the habit with them of of that three way, three step communicate, communicate back, confirm, um, you're, you avoid a lot of problems and it, so, it saves you a lot of time in the long run. Mm -hmm. um, I also, you mentioned um, hiring virtual assistants overseas and I've heard of people having great experiences with that. Um, so, but I would say, I would say that the, 
the other mistake um, that entrepreneurs make is hiring the wrong kind of assistant. In my mind, there are two kinds of assistants. Um, you have your to-do list assistant, um, or you have a partner assistant. The to-do list assistant is somebody who just responds to the list of tasks you give them. They knock them out. They, stuff gets completely done, and that's fine. There's no relationship, really. Um, you just have tasks done. Um, great examples of this types of, of the types of work that are great with these relationships are like data entry, um, research online, um, looking for specific information, um, if you're writing a book or anything like that. Um, those virtual assistants are excellent for that type of work. If you're looking for somebody who's more of a partner in your business, um, who you want to look out for, excuse me, if you, who you want to look out for, like I, like I said, um, relationship management, finding people to network with, um, helping you post in your social media accounts, um, tasks like that, that that are more more involved. You definitely want somebody who's more of a partner, and you can ask that question when you interview somebody, or ask for for it in your request for proposal. Um, but be very clear on what type of assistant that you want. So, so can I say, Shalon, then, that the best thing f for us to do first would be really to write a list of things we need help with and separate them into columns, like the to-dos. Mm -hmm. Like you said, data mining, uh, research online. We put mm -hmm. in one list, and then the things that find JV partners, uh, you know, help you get through events. I put in another list, and then I really start visually seeing what type of assistant I need. Is that and correct? And you know, yeah. What I would do, even with the exercise Shalon uh, shared earlier, where she's like, okay, write down everything in the day that you did, da da da, and then circle all the things that you, that that um, that you don't enjoy. I would take that a step further, and I'd also circle what are the things that I did today that don't make me money. Yes. Uh, that are making money right now and this way then I know okay these things you know they do need to get done but they won't necessarily increase my bottom line today so these things perhaps I can outsource uh, and then I can focus on on bringing home the bacon to use yes. your yes. The name of your company <laughs> you know Nash I would also make a list of all the things that I could have done that would bring me more business and because mm. I got busy I yeah. never thought to do that because, uh, you know, I, I would bet that the bulk of possibilities would lie in that list that I never got done because I was busy with something else. And I could have a real partner in the situation making sure those things were implemented. Mm -hmm. You know, Shalon, we say here that every day we had to send some ships out because the fishermen they send the ship out, and the ship can only come back when they have ship inside, uh, fish inside, which is the money, right? Mm -hmm. But if you get busy doing things, that doesn't happen, right? You don't have to the time to strategize, send the ship out, and see the 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 rewards coming back. Yeah. So I I like a lot the fact that you did split the type of VAs in two different buckets, because yes. The, you have those people that will help you with to do stuff. Mm -hmm. They're simple, that they don't require thinking and strategizing and planning, mm -hmm. and they are valuable in your business. But then you have the other type of assistant that really helps you send the ships out. Mm -hmm. From, for example, like you said, rehearse, uh, researching people that are going to attend events like you are, which is a big, big thing, right? You just think if I knew that I'm going to meet with, you always know those speakers, for example, that you're going to meet there, but yeah. what projects are they working on? Are they doing any promotions right now? If I have that information before I get to the event, how much more I can accomplish looking for new partners? Mm -hmm. it, it, yeah. that, that alone is invaluable. So you have all those other things that need to be done that requires more thinking, more planning, more strategy, more brainstorming between two people, and, and that's when a Swiss Army VA comes in, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, because it's not just the same type of VA that you just give a lot of tasks. And I, need, I, I, I like that you do separate, but I think it needs to be very clear that it's yeah. a different type of thing that you're proposing. Is that correct? Yeah, it is. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and and that's that's where 
that's where a lot of confusion happens, though, because people go online, like to Elance or Odesk, where they're like, okay, this is where I go if I want to outsource, and they see that there are virtual assistants out there who are charging four bucks an hour, and they're like, hey, you know, outsourcing can be great, and then they hire this person with the expectation that they're going to be this partner, and they're disappointed because what they're hiring is a is a to-do list VA. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And, and so, since you mentioned Elance and Odesk, give me some tips on how to find a great VA, a Swiss Army one. Okay, if you're looking for a Swiss Army one, <laughs> only one. <laughs> um, yeah, Twitter is a great resource, actually. Um, really? Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a great network of virtual assistants on Twitter. If you just do a search for virtual assistant in their search box, um, you can also do do a, a search for the hashtag virtual assistants, all one word, um, and also just tweet it out. Tweet it out. Say, hey, I'm looking for a virtual assistant. Who do you know? Who's great? Um, so that's the first the first place I would go is is the Twitter verse. But don't spend too much time there. Yeah. So. Hire a, to a task list to find you some, or a to-do list VA to, to put that out there. Just kidding. Um, but yeah, the Twitterverse is, is definitely one. Um, LinkedIn is a great place to find a virtual assistant. Um, it, you can read reviews <laughs> there, like recommendations. There or where on LinkedIn would I find VA? I would just search for somebody whose profession is virtual assistant. Mm -hmm. um, find somebody who comes highly recommended and you can read testimonials there, right there on their profile page. Um, and uh, also word of mouth. Right now the virtual assistant industry, word of mouth is the best way uh, for us as virtual assistants to get clients. And, and just like so many other, th other services and businesses, um, when you hear it from a friend, you know, <laughs> you know that it's going to be good. Um, so, yeah, those are my top three places That's to great. find a find a human Swiss Army knife. <laughs> and, and Shalon, if people want to go and talk to you, what do they have to do? Yeah, so I have a website. It is Bacon B M B, B as in boy, M as in mother. Um, Bacon B M dot com is short for Bacon Business Management. So come to the website, and you can use my contact form. My phone number is there, my email address. So reach out there. I love helping business owners, even if it's just to help you find a good virtual assistant. I'm connected to a lot of virtual assistants. You know, if, if I wouldn't be the best fit for you, I, I'll tell you and, and find somebody who would be better. So that's, I would love to get okay. in touch. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you very much, Shalon. Actually, uh, just as a side note, how many women were you helping manage at that point? Oh, you know, because I want I want people to understand that you were dealing in several aspects of that business launch at that point, yeah. and you were you were really managing a lot of women. Do you remember more or less? I think our 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 highest number of shows we were managing at the time was 150. 150. Yeah. And I have to tell you, every time the whole the the management group met in our office, you were always the only one not stressed about everything else. <laughs> <laughs> she was the only one not yelling or anything because she you know, she could take care of that very, very well as she can now Thank in you. your own business, right? So get in touch with Shalon. She'll be she'll be happy to share her knowledge with you as well. Thank you very much, Shalon. Thank, Thank you. you. It's been yes, so fun. Yeah, thank you everybody and of course if you think this information is valuable don't forget to share, like, comment, you know, spread the love about this because a lot of people are starting to outsource, they really have a lot of questions, they could use this video quite a bit so hit share and spread out the, the video through your social network. And other than that, see you next time. See you next time. <laughs>